And welcome to Immune Health 2.0. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because we all got through COVID and you're still here, you're still alive. That means you do know something about immune health. So why did you bring yourselves out tonight? Because I think that I have some more things that I can share with you that will be integral to your, your pursuit of health and wellness. Um, this is not for medical advice. This is um, for educational purposes only. I'm not a doctor. I am a senior product specialist with the Fruitful Yield. I am a trainer with the company. Um, so they've put my faith in me that I can do my best to help you with your health goals. I keep looking up there, but it's right here. So what we're going to do is actually, this is the outline. We're going to talk about a innate versus adaptive immune system first. What is the difference? Then we're going to talk about what you can do for daily support. Then we're going to talk about immediate response. What do I mean about immediate response? Somebody sneezes in your face. You're with your grandkids and they're sick and they didn't finish their juice and you grab their juice and you drink it. And then you're like, oh, what did I just do? Right? So immune, immediate response is immediate, immediate, what do you do when you've been exposed? And then therapeutic. Therapeutic is, oh dear, I'm sick. So what do you do when you're, when you're down and out when you're sick? And then we're going to talk about seasonal concerns, which has to do with histamine reactions right? Um, so, and then at the very end, I'm going to touch very, very briefly on gut support, gut lining support. So innate versus adaptive immunity. So our bodies um, constantly undergo sieges of pathogens, uh, viruses, mold, yeast, funguses, bacteria. And when these get inside, you have, your body has two choices, the innate or the adaptive immune system. The innate is basically your white blood cells and a few other that I'll show you in a couple minutes. So it's what you're born with. The adaptive is what you learn. And there's B and T cells. So your first sign of defense is, this is just, this is indicative of a white blood cell, but there's actually other ones that I'll tell you about. It's composed of standard white blood cells that literally eat like a Pac-Man. They just eat the pathogens. But when the pathogens are too much, then the, the T and the B cells come along. They're your superheroes, kind of. Um, they're like secret agents that watch the pathogens and they study them. And then when it's time, the B cell, what it does is it tags the pathogen. And it's like saying, come and get this one. Don't bother with the rest right now. Come and get this one. So B cells, healthy B cells are very, very important. And then whatever the B cells don't tag in your immune systems and doesn't, uh, did I just go backwards? Uh, then when it's tagged, your, your innate system comes and gets them. And then those T cells come after them, the ones that are left. So they do this automatically for you and they do it all the time but there's two critical nutrients that they need. They need zinc and D. They need zinc and D because if they don't have enough D, D and zinc, your body can't make them. You can't make them. It'd be try, like trying to build a playhouse with no wood. You have to have the, the components that these need. So make sure Make sure that you do your best to get what your innate and adaptive immune cells need, the nutri nutrients that they need. We talked a minute ago about um, the immune system. And if you see on this side, it says innate immunity. Now up there, they have things like basophils, neutrophils, phagocytes, uh, dendritic cells. We're going to talk about neutrophils in a few minutes as an example of why certain vitamins and minerals are important. And then you see in the adaptive, it's just basically T and B cells. So adaptive, we need to be able to adapt. Why is this up here? The reason this is up here, the reason this is up here is because, remember we talked about what do you do when you've somebody sneezed in your face or something 
you basically have zero to three days to do to deal with it. If you don't, it it goes systemic. So what actually happens is when pathogens pathogens get in our orifices, right? They get in our nose and our mouth. And what happens typically is they go up into the back of your sinuses and they start building something. It takes zero to three days, but they start building something called a mast cell, M-A-S-T, a mast cell. It's sort of like a Star Wars Death Star. It builds and builds and builds. And in three days, it's nice and ripe and it lets go. Have you? I know you have. I have. I, I imagine you have. Have you ever been fine, 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 and then poof, like you just, you just, it just hits you. Do you ever remember had that happening? Like, well, that's what happened about three days ago or so. Somehow or another, some pathogens got in your, your, your nasal cavities. So what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about what to do um, about that in a few minutes. The first thing we're going to do is daily support. How many of you know what an antioxidant is? An antioxidant? You know they're good for you, right? But you don't really know why, right? So I'll explain it. All right. So remember when you were younger and you were in school, you learned about an atom. Remember an atom? There is a proton and a neutron in the middle, and then there's electron circling, right? Remember? Do you remember that? Also, remember that in order for that atom to be stable, it has to have an equal number of electrons. It has to have an equal pair of electrons. If it doesn't, it's called oxidized. Now, this, this thing I'm doing with my hands, this, is, this atom is missing an electron, so it's unstable, right? Okay. An antioxidant... This is an oxidized atom. An antioxidant donates an electron to stabilize the atom. All right, what is your first name? Marie? Maria. So we can call you Maria or we can call you Ms. Maria. But any name, you're still you, right? Okay, so... When an atom, is, when an electron is missing, it's called oxidized. Another thing that's called is a free radical. It's the same thing, it's just a different name. Remember when we were younger, we would go on those scavenger hunts, looking for a pink Kleenex, remember all that, going on scavenger hunts when we were little? Okay, so here is a free radical, and a free radical scavenger looks for this situation and donates, ah, uh, can you guess? An electron, right. So an antioxidant and a free radical scavenger both donate together electrons. Why is that important? So let's say you have, I guess I'll use these. Let's say you have healthy, healthy cells. These are healthy cells. Every, your body's just humming along, everything's healthy. And this is not indicative of, of anything. I'm just trying to find something to use. So let's say this is a burnt piece of steak. This is an oxidized atom. This is a burnt piece of steak, stress, pollution, disease. This is an oxidized atom. It's, it needs an electron desperately. And somehow or another, it gets in our pie hole, right? So we eat it or it gets in there. And it goes in, it, into your body and it says, oh, I need an electron. And it rips one off of a healthy cell. And that healthy cell says, oh, no, Oop, I'll get it. I need an electron. It rips one off of this one. And this is, I need an electron. It rips one. And this is what we call disease. But it's really not disease. It's a structural breakdown. Do you get it? So reset. And I haven't really got the proper vitamins here. But let's say this is vitamin C. It donates electrons so here's happy happy cells you're fine this is reset and this is vitamin c here comes that burnt piece of steak the pollution stress whatever it comes in it says oh, i need an electron and vitamin c goes here you go over 
That's why it's really important to take vitamin C or other antioxidants or free radicals on a daily basis. Because if you're if if something comes into your system and your system is already broken down from simple stuff like pollution, then how what kind of how are you gonna deal with any any pathogens that come in when when you're when you have holes in your roof, right? I'm using a lot of analogies. So the whole point of this whole thing was that free radical scavengers are very important. So we're going to talk we're going to talk about free radical scavengers a little bit here. The AMA only recognizes A, C, D, and E as antioxidants. All the rest, like um, alpha lipoic acid, resveratrol, all those things have to be labeled as free radical scavengers. But they're the same thing. They donate electrons. electrons. That's really key. Now, certain ones donate electrons better in different locations in your body, like resveratrol is really good for the heart, you know, and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, um, OK. So this next part is going to be a little bit mm, scholarly. And why am I doing this? This is exactly why. Vitamins are not a religion. I don't want you to do something because I said so. I want you to understand why. An educated person is, is the, our best customer because they understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these inner, these um, free radical scavenger. Well, these are antioxidants. I'm going to explain how they're used. We already talked about D and zinc, right? All right, vitamin A. It's very, very important, especially when it comes to lung health. What did we just get through? The whole pandemic that just happened. That was very lung-centric, right? It supports making your body making antibodies. Those antibodies, by the way, are the B cells. So vitamin A also helps with the B cells, which tag the bad guys. Um, the other thing that it does is it acts as an orchestra leader. It says, bring the immune system over here. That's fine over there. Bring it over here. So vitamin A is, is very, very important. Vitamin C. Well, it's a really strong antioxidant that can boost your blood antioxidant levels. Vitamin C is water-based, so it flows through your system in your blood, um, as opposed to vitamin E, which is fat-based. It just goes straight into the cells. But anyway, it supports your healthy heart, your blood pressure, your LDLs, your triglycerides, your uric acid levels. It supports tissue growth and repair. Vitamin C is a key thing. It delivers, it's a catalyst to getting the collagen in your body. What is collagen? It's the two by fours in your house. If your house didn't have strong two by fours, it would crumble, right? As we get older, collagen depletes. Vitamin C is a key component to you having healthy collagen levels anyway. So if you don't have enough vitamin C, you can't even make healthy levels of collagen, even though you're already depleting them because you're getting older. Anyway, vitamin C is really important. It can support um, iron, iron absorption, and C and D are a very powerful combination. So let's talk about C. I'm going to have to look up because um, I have to. So vitamin C uh, supports your resistance to invaders and pathogens, and it can lower your susceptibility because it's an antioxidant. It keeps the structure of the house so that you're coming at it with a healthy system to begin with. Um, so let's, let's talk about what is key about the vitamin C. What does it do? So you saw those little critters one of them was a neutrophil. Remember I pointed out the neutrophil? We're going to talk about a neutrophil. It's a key actor in the immune system. In fact, in a little bit, you'll see on the slide the action of a neutrophil. It's really cool. Um, so it, it, it's really important that we have vitamin C for the neutrophils to be produced. Um, what they do is they eat pathogens and bacteria for lunch. 
They also can cast a net over the pathogens, the bacteria, and inject the bacteria with certain chemicals that kill the bacteria and digest the bacteria. And then that very bacteria that was out to get you is lunch. Some of the bacteria that it digests and shreds up, you actually use again for nutrition in your body. So neutrophils are just, they're just awesome. So that's just one way that vitamin C helps you. Vitamin D is one of the most important foundational vitamins. It actually helps 200 different things in your body, 200. It's fantastic. It can uh, calm down an overactive immune system. It also can help if you have chronic inflammation. It can help soothe chronic inflammation. Um, so here's one of the things about vitamin D. Uh, how many of you are taking vitamin D? Yeah. A lot of people during COVID, uh, the CDC asked everybody to take like two to, no, four to 8,000 a day. I don't know if you heard that. They were asking people to take a lot of vitamin D every day. Well, vitamin D does, that always concerned me because of what I'm about to say. So vitamin D is really, really good for you, but it does one bad thing. So follow me here. Calcium and magnesium make new bone. That new bone is circulated by the D3. Well, one of the places that that new bone is circulated is into the veins and arteries, which can lay down and stiffen and harden the veins and arteries. That's not good. That's not good. MK7, it's a type of K2. K2 is a vitamin. MK7 acts like a transporter, or I like to say it's the Uber. You know, the Uber, the thing that gives you a ride. It literally comes in, grabs that new bone from the veins and arteries and brings it to the bone where it can get absorbed into the bone and keep your bone healthy. The other thing that K2 does is it, um, rest it can restart dying mitochondria. Do you know what mitochondria are? It's the powerhouse of the cell. It's the electricity. It's, it's the mitochondria make ATP. ATP is what you use for energy. Did you ever notice that toddlers have a lot of energy? That's because they have all their mitochondria firing. Now, as we age, unless we do something about it, our mitochondria steadily pass away. At 90, the research shows that at 90 years old, if somebody hasn't done something to support their mitochondria, there's only 5% of the mitochondria left. So in your, if you li were living in your house and all of a sudden your power got cut to 5%, you would have to start shutting some things down, right? You'd have to unplug the refrigerator. You'd have to close up the windows. Well, as we get older, there are things we can do to support rebuilding mitochondria. And MK7 is one of them. You have more mitochondria in your brain and in your heart than anywhere else. As far as the grabbing the bones, the, the bone from the veins and arteries and bringing it to the bones, do you know what a calcium score is? It's actually one of the key indicators of heart problems. It's the key indicator. There is no better indicator of the condition of your heart than a calcium score. Your insurance won't cover it. You'll have to pay about $100 for it. I've been taking MK7, and this is me. I've been taking MK7 for at least four years, maybe longer. I went in for my calcium score last month. Zero. Zero calcium score. None in my heart at all. So when I got the results back from my doctor, he said they were spectacular results. So that's what it's supposed to do. And it looks like that's one of the factors that helped me. MK, there's K2, and then there's two types of K2. It's MK7, which works in your body for 72 hours. It has a 72 hour half-life. And there's MK4, which is also good, but it only lasts about four hours in your body. So most people go for MK7. Uh, vitamin E. All right. So vitamin E, your 
your cells in your body are, they say you're 90% water or whatever they say, right? But you also are a lot of fat. And if you weren't lipid, if you weren't, you would be puddle on the floor. This, this is fat. This is my sack. This is my human sack, right? And, you know, oil and water don't mix, but oil and oil mix. So vitamin E is a electron donor for lipid environments. Vitamin C goes through your blood. That's water. That's water-based. So vitamin E donates electrons on the cell, on the cell wall. Vitamin E is really, really good for your heart. Have you ever, have you ever gone... I know I've done it. Have you ever gone to a campfire and somebody throws a, a plastic bag or a styrofoam cup on the, on the fire? Do you notice that really stinks? Does that ever happen to you? No? Yeah, well, it really smells bad. It's very toxic. That's super, super toxic. Where am I going with this? Well, another thing to be aware of, so burning plastic and pesticides and stuff like that is not good. It's not healthy. I don't know if you know this, but in your body, if you, in your body, when, when there's a certain toxic level, right? One of the things your body does to cope is it takes like glyphosate or pesticides and it sticks it in fat. And it like there's certain parts in your body that's literally holding toxins in globs of fat to protect you. So whenever anybody is managing their weight, right, and some of that is burning off, a lot of times they don't feel good. They feel like they're getting sick. Have you ever noticed that? Because of one of the reasons could be because they're burning their own toxic fat. So what does this have to do with vitamin E? Well, burning toxic fat is called ROS, reactive oxygen species. ROS is one of the most dangerous forms of free radicals or oxidized atoms. Well, vitamin E, what it does, remember how we did the little example here? What vitamin E does is it looks for fat molecules that are out of balance and it donates electrons big time. So as far as heart health and all those things, it's very important to take vitamin E because it, it, it's a free radical scavenger in fat environments. Does that make sense? So vitamin E is really, really important. Oh, it also is very important for your T cells because your T cells need vitamin E so you can pre prevent T cells. Those are the guys who tag. Selenium. Selenium is really important, especially for women. Uh, men too. Um, selenium is very important because it helps you make glutathione. Glutathione is our vitamin C. It's not really vitamin C. It's, it's a free radical scavenger that we make. Um, so that's important. It protects the body's lipid layers. It supports healthy inflammation. Um, it, can, it can really help if you're, the same as vitamin E, it can really help if your cells are being attacked or are unstable as far as um, electrons go. Zinc. How many of you are taking zinc? Yes, zinc. Zinc is really important. It, zinc and copper are important for over 300 crucial, critical enzymatic reactions in your body. Like, did you ever, well, you can imagine getting a brand new car and like a week later, the glove compartment doesn't work. Sometimes it just falls open or sometimes that back window works and sometimes it doesn't. Well, that's kind of what it's like if you don't have enough zinc. It's, it's kind of like different reactions aren't just quite working right. Very important to take zinc. Um, the other thing, the reason that a lot of people took it during the pandemic was when zinc is delivered into the actual cell, when it's delivered into the cell, it allows that cell to, to be able to tell self from non-self RNA. 
And you know that the virus is an RNA. You know that, right? It has to, the virus has to have a host cell. It cannot work without a host cell. It's RNA, it's not DNA. So anyway, for if you have zinc inside of your cell, we'll talk about what delivers that in a few minutes, um, your cell can tell, and say, uh, 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 you're not me, get them. And so your immune system can be faster acting. Copper and zinc. A lot of people have been taking a lot of zinc. Now, typically, if you've been taking a multivitamin, typically a multivitamin will have a little bit of copper in it. If you haven't been taking a multivitamin, you, it's a really good idea to supplement with a little bit of copper. You just need a very small amount. We actually have drops, like one drop a day. You don't need much, but zinc and copper are a teeter-totter. They balance each other. If you don't have any copper, the zinc can go way out of balance. And one of the things that could be an indicator of that is when the limb the legs and the arms, they just feel flaccid. They, they, they're just, they just feel floppy. And so if you want to supplement with a little bit of copper, that might help. Um, again, I really worried because a lot of people were taking a lot of zinc and a lot of D, and they weren't taking the, the supplements that were balancing that. D needs K2, copper, uh, zinc needs a little bit of copper and just small amounts, trace amounts of copper. Okay, so we finished the overview, and you asked earlier, where do, we, where do we find all these vitamins? Well, what about a multivitamin? That is really one of the key things that you can do for yourself. This particular one is a two per day. It's very inexpensive. I think it's like $12 or something for a month's supply. Give me a break. That is amazing. It has vitamin B, C, D, zinc. It has 25 vitamins and minerals. It's a two per day. It's non-GMO. It's gluten-free. Um, it has all of the vitamins that are in either the RDA, recommended daily amount, or stronger. It has some of the unusual ones like biotin and selenium and diff vitamin E. So a basic two per day. A one per day, you can't fit five pounds of sausage in a one pound bag. If you're going to do nothing else, sure, get a one per day. But a two per day is actually better because you're going to get a little bit more. So a two per day, there's a, a lot, but this is a very good one. And Life Extension is a very good brand. All right. So we just talked about why vitamins are good for you. They're sort of like the structural component the chemical, chemical, chemical component, sort of, right? Have you, has, have you heard of nutritional mushrooms? Does anybody take mushrooms? Okay, mushrooms. So one of the people said she eats mushrooms, fresh ones. It's very important that you cook mushrooms. You really is not supposed to eat them raw. They have, oh gosh, it starts with a C. They have something that we can't digest, sort of like we can't eat grass. Mushrooms have, oh, it starts with a C. I can't remember the name of it. But you should really cook mushrooms if you're going to eat them. But there are therapeutic mushrooms. Stamet 7 is, to, is seven different kinds of mushrooms. And you take it seven days a week. It's made to take every day. So why would you take a vitamin and a mushroom? Because mushrooms are functional and they help your organ systems. Lion's mane helps the brain, chaga helps the lungs, you know, uh, mataki helps blood sugar. So they're very, very good. You're hitting both the chemi chemistry of it and the organ part of it. So this is a fantastic, I, I eat mushrooms every day, uh, therapeutic mushrooms every day. I put them in as many things as I can, my coffee, my shakes, I just eat them. So this particular one can enhance blood sugar uh, modulation, respiration, digestion. It helps your bodies adapt to stress. Um, we talked about lion's mane being for brain and nerves. Reishi is for your immune system. Cordyceps, think oxygen. 
it just helps you absorb oxygen, just bring the oxygen in. Chaga was huge during the pandemic. It helps balance the mucosal. If it's too dry or too moist in the lungs, it helps balance that. It's a fantastic mushroom. So for daily support, what I, what I am saying is these two, a, vi a multivitamin and a, and a basic everyday mushroom. That is what I'm recommending. So let's talk about when somebody sneezes in your face or you're, you're at a busy shopping, uh, you're standing in lines in a massive line on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon. When you're that crowded with that many people, you are pretty much inhaling just about every virus the neighborhood has or bacteria, whatever. So either wear a mask or do something. And we'll talk about some of the things you can do. So I love these pictures. Um, this is a phagocyte. We'll have a bunch of different pictures of them, but it's, it's really, if you ever ha wanna have fun, look it up on YouTube, a phagocyte in action. They are awesome. So see the little orange things, those are bacteria. And this kind of like ball of yarn, it kind of just rolls around and it just eats them. It's so cool. It's, it's just so cool. So here's another image of a phagocyte that's destroying some bacteria. You can see all of the little, the little guys. And then on the bottom here, you can see the, the phagocyte coming up to get it. And then see how it's kind of like taking over a little bit. We have another phagocyte coming in from this side. And then now it's totally engulfed it and it's shooting all those poisons in the bacteria. And now it just, just destroyed the bacteria. It just, it just decomposed it. Here's another image of the phagocyte and the, and this green stuff is bacteria. And then the phagocyte comes rolling along. And you can see how it's kind of, see those little green things going up? It's, it's literally sucking the bacteria up into its mouth. And um, here it's, it's pretty much done. Now it has the bacteria inside itself and it shreds it. It just shreds it into pieces. And then it's released into the cell and it can be used by the cell. It can be used as food in some cases. So um, it's, it's really fun. Um, so what do you do about stuff like that? Remember the zero to three days? We talked about that earlier. Well, one of the things that I love, and I actually use this, well, I use just about everything here, actually, at one time or another. This is Host Defense Micro Shield. Again, it's mushrooms, but this is very specifically formulated. It's a little, it's a little spray bottle. You can throw it in your purse, in your pocket. When you're in those lines, when you're on a plane, when you're with a bunch of little kids, uh, when you're at work and somebody sneezes on you, um, you just take this out. It's three sprays in your mouth. And what this does is very specific. It activates the immune system in your head not in your whole body. You don't want a full body response to an immediately inhaled pathogen. It's too much, right? So something like this can be very, very helpful. It's, they have, they come in different flavors. You can also use sovereign silver. You can use oregano. We'll get to those. You can use those. This tastes nice and it doesn't smell. Like my husband and I, my kids live out of state, so we travel a lot. I usually use this on the plane. I do it before I get on the plane, while I'm on the plane, and after I get off the plane, for obvious reasons. Um, when I do oregano, how many of you ever used oregano? Yeah, it's yeah. strong, yeah. strong. The people sitting around me don't like when I use that on the plane. <laughs> so I don't use it on the plane anymore, I use this. So this, again, activates the immune system in your head. It gets, it's so that mast cell has a, a difficult time developing. So these little, these little things are great to carry around. Do you know that when we um, take herbs and things like that, we're literally borrowing the plant's immune system. Did you know that? 
those bushes and trees, they can't, when they're cold, they can't come in. They can't get a coat. Uh, when it's freezing or when it's raining or when there's bacteria or they got to deal with it. Well, why is oregano so strong? Well, this is a perfect example. This is where it's, I think it's the mountains of Turkey. This is where it's harvested. That is not a friendly environment. It's, it's frigid. It's rocky. It's a very, very difficult. It's a harsh environment. Do you know some of the best um, skincare, some of the best lotions come from plants that live in the Sahara Desert? Because they have to deal, aloe, think of aloe. Isn't that wonderfully moist? It has to deal with that environment. That's what I'm trying to say. We borrow the plant's immune system. So oregano is another thing that you can use. You can use it, uh, it's really good for healthy cells. My husband actually does use it. He puts one drop on his toothbrush at night with his toothpaste for healthy gums. And his dentist actually said, what are you doing? You don't have a problem anymore. He's like, oh, so um, yeah. So you can use it there. You can use it for immune support. You can actually put this on your toes for toe, uh, toenail fungus. It can actually be very, very good for that. They do have one for sinuses, but please get the one for sinuses. You put up, you put that in your sinuses, and you're going to be a happy camper. Use the one for sinuses. Um, you can literally put it in uh, your throat. You can put two drops in your mouth, and it will just about take care of any pathogen. You can put a little bit in water. You can gargle it and spit it out. Um, it it can be used for all kinds of things. So so instead of using this to activate the immune system in your head, you can use oregano. You can. And you can use oregano more deeply, like take a lot more of it on a regular basis to deal with deeper immune system issues. So let's go to one more thing you can do, and that's silver. So silver, what's cool about silver is it tastes like water. It it can be used for just about anything, and it it it's is not a friend of bacteria, viruses, molds, yeast, fungus. It literally kills those things. So this kills bacteria, mold, yeast, fungus. Bacteria, molds, yeast, fungus. One other thing, and so does this. The difference is this burns it. That's its mode of action. It literally burns the pathogen where this one explodes the pathogen. It blows it up by ripping off electrons. Remember we were talking how vitamin C is a good electron donor? Well, this is an electron stealer. Um, and neither one of these touch healthy cells, only pathogenic cells. What's cool about this one is on the side of the box, you have the directions on how to use it. And it, they actually have it for pets and children as well. So it says uh, one teaspoon a day for daily maintenance. If somebody sneezes on you, do it three times a day. If you're really, really sick, do it five times a day. If you're really, really sick, do it seven times a day. And it's a teaspoon, it's a dose. Um, I've used this many, many times. It's fantastic stuff. They do have sinus relief, which actually I am using now. Um, it has a, a cool little sinus sprayer. If you use this, when you're done, wash the bottle and just get a refill because it's the same thing. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't smell. It's great stuff. So let's, we're just going to look at how silver works. So here, that little circle up there, that is a bacteria. You can see it's already starting to die on the back side there. It's got sort of like, it's not whole on the back side. It's in a bath of silver right now. And then if you look, the, the, the outside, the cell wall is getting disintegrated. Do you see how it's not as strong? And then here it just, just explodes. So, yeah, so that's how silver works. Now, some people say, well, doesn't silver make you blue? 
Well, this is a 10 parts per million. The stuff that makes you blue is homemade and it's 250 parts per million. I do not recommend it. It does not, it stays in your system. This washes out of your system. It's a hydrosol, it goes straight out your system. You can do seven teaspoons, seven times a day for seven years and it will not build up. So it just comes in and it goes doom, 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 and exits. Great stuff. Um, so what about when you're sick? Like, oh dear, it's been three days and the mast cell has released. Well, we have, how many people have ever used homeopathy? Yay. Yes? No? Yes? Okay. With homeopathy, what's key about that is if you're on any other medications, you can take homeopathy. Some of these things, if you're on medications, you should really check with your physician or your pharmacist. But homeopathy, there's no known drug interactions. It says it on the box. No known drug interactions. How you take homeopathy is you match symptoms. So oscillococcium, it says flu. Think flu is typically viruses. Colds are typically bacteria. So if you have sneezing, runny nose, minor sore throat, you would go with cold calm. If you have fever, chills, fatigue, body aches, you would go with oscillococcium. We use this a lot in our family. I always know to take this when I feel tired and chilly and there's no real reason. Like, ah, uh, and I just take a tube and it's over. So let's see how it works for you, but it's great stuff. In Europe, this you have to go to a pharmacy for. This is very great stuff. Did you know that the, the royal family in England has used homeopathy for decades? So, a silicoxium, we, we really would just talk about that. It supports, uh, it, it decreases um, flu-like symptoms. It decreases the duration and the severity of colds and flus. It's great stuff. You can take it a little bit preventatively. Um, it's non-drowsy, chewing up. It's great stuff. And then cold calm. It does not mask symptoms. What it does is it targets specific, specific sim symptoms. And it, it tries to bring resolve to those symptoms. So do you know how homeopathy really works? It actually is an energy medicine that reminds your system how to take action. So let's say that you want the garbage taken out at home. And let's say she's a neighbor and she comes over and says, I can help you with editing that email, but I'm not going to help you with my, with your garbage. Would that be helpful? No, you need help taking out your garbage, right? So the reason you would match symptoms is if you have a fever, chills and body aches, this is not going to help you. You have to go with the ones that match the symptoms. And how, again, how does it do? It triggers your immune system to take action. For instance, it's sort of like a long forgotten phone number. If I tell you the first three digits of that phone number, you're going to remember the rest of it. Ready? 588. Right? 2300. Right. So your body, if, it, if you remind your body how to do it, it says, oh yeah, I know how to do that. That's how homeopathy works. So you always treat like with like. So that's one. This is if you're sick. The second one is my community. I just can't speak highly enough about my community. We keep my community at our house at all times. Sometimes I'm at work and I call my husband. He's retired now. I call my husband and I say, hey, honey, how are you? And he goes, oh, I'm not feeling so good. I'm like, go take some of my community. He takes a couple. I come home. 
Hi, honey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? How was your day? How are you? I'm fine. Why do you ask? Like completely forgot he was sick. I, I keep my community around all the time. Um, this has uh, lion's mane, reishi, turkey tail is really good um, for, uh, it's a really good free radical scavenger. Chaga, cordyceps, amadou, these are awesome mushrooms. It's the most comprehensive. If you are sick, if you've been sick, if you can't get your mojo back, if you've run a marathon and you just can't get back, my community. The next one is probably the most comprehensive immune formula we have in the store. It's called Wellness Formula. This stuff is crazy good. You can use it for just about anything immune-wise. So let's talk about this just for a minute. It has over 35 years as a wellness formula. Um, it's been people's go-to product for a very long time. It has things for stress, immune, respiratory. So what's the big deal? The big deal is how you take it. So if you see up here, it says you take three tablets a day for just daily wellness. I think you don't even need to take three a day. If you're healthy and you're doing, you're doing these two and this, you probably could get by with one a day. But when you need it, oh man, that is like a ninja. It's ready to take on just about anything. So what you do is you do three, five times a day. Oh, every three hours. You do three every three hours with no more than 15 a day. About four years ago, I got really sick. And I hit, I got home and the whole mast cell thing, it hit me. And the only thing I had in the cabinet at that time was wellness formula. So I did it according to what they're saying. And within four doses, it was like nothing ever happened. I was just right back. So I can't, I can't say enough about this one. So your miraculous immune system has been very busy every second of every day, devoting, uh, defending you against pathogens and invaders. It has three lines of defense, your mucous membrane, your skin and mucous membrane. But when bacteria get through that mucus, uh, through the skin and that bacteria gets down into your bloodstream, that's when we have a different line of defense, the neutrophils and the macrophages. Remember that guy that rolls around eating the bacteria? Really, Google that. It's so cool. Um, they get the things that don't belong. And then your third line of defense is your dendritic cells, those T and B cells that teach. Um, this is the reverse. There's a phagocyte on the bottom, and it's ripping the bacteria apart. Okay, you know what the Emmys is? The Emmys and the Oscars. There's something called the Vitae Award. Only one brand, only one product gets it every year. This is, it says 16 times up there, but if you go over to the bottle right now, it'll say 18 times. It's won the Vitae Award for 18 years. That's the best product. The Vitae Award is like the Oscars. This is a fantastic formula. It's a go-to for so many th things. It has 30 key nutrients. It offers a very comprehensive immune system and antioxidant donates electrons defense. So support your immune system so it can support you. So we're going to go on to seasonal concerns. Seasonal concerns are histamine reactions. Do you know what I mean by that? It's like when pollen or pets cause you to sneeze, runny nose, watery eyes, right? So this is different than the immune system response. This is a histamine response. Yeah. Running watery eyes, runny nose. Okay, so why do we have a histamine response? Well, back when we were cave people, if, if we came into something that was harmful to our system, we're at, that histamine response is actually a reaction trying to flush it out. You know, think of those, that water and that mucus, you're trying to flush it away. Well, in this day and age, you know, if we have a pollen response, we can come in out of the, out of the, you know, into air conditioning 
but we got to truncate that response because it's miserable, right? So what are some of the things that we can use? The now, ooh, here it is, the now quercetin with bromelain. Great stuff for histamine responses. I just can't tell you how good it is. If you ever do buy quercetin, whether it's this one or another one, make sure it has either vitamin C or bromelain in it because quercetin needs those two things, one of those two things to work in your system properly. Um, so quercetin is really, really good for immune system. Uh, no, for um, histamine responses. The next one is hybrid AR. Hybrid AR is a game changer if you have seasonal concerns. Two is a loading dose, and then you take one a day. So let's say that somebody has a reaction every spring. When you know, because most people will have histamine reactions, they know when the ragweed comes or whatever it is. Start it about a week before that season starts, and then keep it on, keep on it. It's fantastic stuff. Two is a loading dose and then one a day. It, it's just a game changer. It's, I've used it. It's, it works in 20 minutes. It's on the box. And it was developed by uh, Jason Dubois, who actually was, um, he's, a, he's a medical pharmacist. He's a pharmacist MD. Um, so it's, it's doctor formulated. And then last, remember when we had the Canada fires and there was all that pollution? Well, here we go back to mushrooms again. Breathe. Breathe is chaga, rishi, and cordyceps. Rishi is for um, immune, liver, detox, blood sugar. Cordyceps is about delivering oxygen. Like if you work out, try taking some cordyceps before you work out. If you get tired, all you have to do is just take a deep breath and say, whoa, I'm back. It's incredible. And then chaga balances the, the mucous membrane lining internally. So um, it's, it's very, very good. This is not for histamine reactions. This is for pollution. So this would have been great during the fires. Um, and then the last is the gut health. Yes, gut health is very important for your immune system. So if you look at the diagram, you'll see that there's holes. That's called leaks in the gut or leaky gut. So what happens is you, your gut lining it is your upper and lower intestines is what I'm calling the gut lining. It's one cell thick and it's thinner than a hair, right? It's one cell thick, thinner than a hair, and it covers the area of a tennis court. So it's all kind of folded up inside there. It's supposed to be your, it's supposed to be your dividing between, your, your division between the external word, your food, and your bloodstream. But when you have a leak in the gut, Notice it goes directly into your bloodstream. Do you know that you're not supposed to put, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to put broccoli in a hypodermic needle and shoot it up. Do you know you're not supposed to do that? Well, when you have leaks in your gut, what literally can happen is you eat food, and especially if you don't have a good digestive system, the food drops into your upper intestine and that happens. The food go straight into your bloodstream and your body goes, oh my goodness, nachos, kill it. It's a hamburger. It's a piece of pickle. Get it. Because it doesn't belong in your bloodstream. But if you have leaks in your gut, it goes into your bloodstream. And then what does your body do? It starts an inflammation response. That's why if you come in here and you say, oh, you tell any of our associates, oh, I have gas and bloating, they'll say a probiotic. Because they know that what could be happening is the food is getting where it doesn't belong in your bloodstream. Now, what can happen sometimes is let's say you've had a big meal and it's something that doesn't agree with you anyway, right? And your system gets overwhelmed and finally your body says, just flush it. 
And sometimes we get alternating stopped up and moving our bowels too fast, right? We get diarrhea when our body just can't handle that much food coming into where it doesn't belong. So this is what a um, highly inflamed gut looks like. That's blood. That is not good. So a lot of people say, oh, I take probiotics. Is that going to help? Putting probiotics on that gut lining, that highly inflamed gut lining, is like trying to put makeup on an open flesh wound. It won't stick. How can it? It can't. Like, even if it's the best probiotic, well, actually, there is one. But um, so if you look at the, the, the lower one, that's a healthy intestine. See how it has that nice mucous membrane lining? And it, like, that's a great place to grow probiotics. How do you go from there to there? The good news is every three days, a healthy gut lining completely replaces itself. Every three days. An unhealthy gut lining, unhealthy gut lining completely replaces itself every 10 days. So, but if you keep doing what you keep doing to the gut lining, even though it's trying to repair itself, it'll still be a bloody mess, right? So what do we do? One of the best products we carry, I have it in my purse, I have it at home, is Ion Gut Health. Ion Gut Health. It's one of the best products we have. What it is, is it's ionized dinosaur dirt. It's ionized fulvic acid. It's clear. It tastes like hose water. Remember when we used to drink water out of the hose when we were little kids? It tastes like hose water. A teaspoon three times a day before meals is what they recommend on the bottle. This is a travel bottle. I highly recommend if you're going to get it, you get the travel bottle. It's a little over 10 bucks. I've been carrying mine around for four or five years now. I just refill it. You just squirt it in your mouth. Once you figure out what a teaspoon is, it's great stuff. So what does it do? Remember we talked about ionization. So what this does is it ionizes the gut lining. Why is it important? I'll tell you. So the first, the first picture is a typical gut lining. It's a healthy gut lining. The next one, just to the side, is it reinforced with ion gut health. Now, there isn't really that much difference. You see, some of, the, some, of, some of the tight junctions look a little bit bigger, a little thicker, but not really, right? Now, the one in the corner, that is... A bloody gut lining that is those cells they're just hanging out there that's not good the next one is oh and that's in the presence of glyphosate that's key i'll be right back to that the next one is that same gut lining in the presence of glyphosate and in the presence of iron gut health it actually makes the the gut the tight junctions thicker and stronger it's like it redoubles its effort so what does it actually do? And this, what I'm about to tell you, if you want to write this down, I would write this down. It truncates the zonulin reaction. It truncates or can truncate the zonulin reaction. So what is a zonulin reaction? So remember I said it's one cell thick and it's thinner than a hair, right? So these are cells and this is the tight junction. So when either gluten or glyphosate, glyphosate is pesticides. They started spraying pesticides in 1982. They started spraying glyphosate in 1982. Chronic diseases started in 1984 in America. Glyphosate is in almost all conventional foods. It's in a lot of typical stuff. There's so much glyphosate in our food that it's in women's breast milk. So do your best to eat organic, but it's going to be there. So pulling back to the zonulin reaction, that tight junction, what breaks that open is the zonulin reaction. What triggers it is either gluten or glyphosate. So what happens is you eat um, something with glyphosate, uh, lettuce that hasn't been, that's not organic. It comes and it touches that tight junction, gluten or glyphosate. 
that triggers a zonulin reaction. And that's like a firecracker that breaks that open. So gluten and glyphosate trigger zonulin reactions, right? When you take ion gut health, what happens is it coats that lining, it ionizes that lining. And when gluten or glyphosate come and touch it, it short circuits the reaction. It doesn't happen. So, and not only that, it seems to redouble the thickness in, in the pressure, in, in, the, in the presence. So it's great stuff. And a lot of people will say, do I have to take that for the rest of my life? Well, I know that I know that I should not be eating gluten and I should do organic as much as I can. But I do eat out sometimes. So before I eat out, I take it with me and I take some. And at the end of my meal, I'll take some, right? Um, it's great stuff. I just can't, I can't tell you. Now this, remember, this is what an irritated gut lining looks like. You, you want to do what you can to get it back. Um, it's great stuff. So uh, thank you.